Hello beautiful people, it's Trina here. Welcome back to my channel. Today we continue with our Zara exploration with another handful of fragrances, this time all created in 1923 by one of my favorite perfumers, Olivia Giacobetti. I love the fact that Zara has been recruiting high caliber talent of late. It raises a keen eyebrow among fume heads on a budget like me. Ms. Giacobetti has created the likes of Diptyque's Philosokos, Frederick Malls En Passant, L'Artisan Parfumeur Zing, T for Two, and Première Fig, or Figuier, or however you pronounce that, Vamp à New York from Honoré des Prés, and a few more I've personally owned at one point or another uh, in the past on my fragrance journey. Now these four from Zara are basically all musky skin scents targeting the male market, but honestly, they're all unisex. I didn't expect amazing performance from any of them, and although one or two might last longer than the others, they're certainly more typical of Zara Fair in terms of performance. I don't know what the name of the collection is, but uh, on the boxes of the full-sized 100 ml bottles, it reads a, a perfume by Olivia Giacobetti. I purchased all of these in 25 ml size, which is great for bringing something on the go, and it's perfect for these ones because you'll need to spray them for sure. All of them carry a theme of white musk, clean laundry, and uh, aesthetic minimalism. I doubt any of them will be particularly original given the budget and, frankly, how saturated the perfume market is now. Amazingly, however, new frags do pop up all the time and surprise us, eh? But anyway, how do these smell? Let's find out. Okay, first we have Blanc Ensoleillé. I think that's how you pronounce it. Sunny White. Sounds better in French though. It's a milky, witty fragrance with three main accords, uh, like all the fragrances in this collection. And they are bergamot at the top, coconut milk in the middle, and musky woodiness in the base. The target market is men, as I mentioned, but nope, this is definitely good for ladies, too. And here's Zara's take on this stuff. In the full sun or the middle of winter, the appeal of white jeans, indispensable, lighthearted, chic, and unconventional. A milky, salty, sugary white, a soft and hypnotic white. Look, white jeans are impractical for so many reasons. I recommend a hard pass next time you're in the denim section. This fragrance, however, is lovely. It's a crisp, clean, musky, fig coconut fragrance that is very light and casual. Yes, jeans and a t-shirt type of frag, I think, which is appealing and very much in the style of Giacobetti. But you know, I can't think of the last time I wore jeans, let alone white jeans, and a t-shirt. I do have a few cotton-esque type tees, but they're reserved for workouts, if I'm honest. Jeans are hard to get into my size here in Japan. Too hot for most of the year where I live and too casual for work. Too limiting for me for that association. But anyway, this fragrance is certainly not limited in use. You can wear this anytime and anywhere uh, as uh, you can for all the fragrances in this collection. Well, perhaps not too more like formal and nighttime occasions. It's it's a day, they're, they're all day scents. The only sad quality with this one is lack of projection, longevity, and sillage, as is the case with all of them. You'll have to reapply throughout the day. To ramp up this lovely aura, you'll create around your presence with this one, as well as the others coming. Yeah, so this is watery, a little salty, refreshing, slightly milky, and synthetically pleasing. I feel like um, I'm in a beach house on vacation. It's a cool morning and I've gotten up early to step out in the balcony. I'm in the shade with the sun well behind the building that hosts me. There's a strong breeze that slaps the sleep out of my eyes and the ocean and the beach before me beckon me out for a morning walk. It's thirst quenching. And when I think of it, this is a quality in perfumery that Olivia Giacobetti is known for. There's indeed a marine quality to this one, which normally would not be my thing, but probably thanks to the coconut, it works here. Thumbs up. Next we have Vapeur Blanche, a white vapor, an aromatic woody fragrance, and the top note here is eucalyptus. The middle note, cedar, and the base note, musk. This is the most masculine of the bunch, I feel. 
And here's the promotional quote. The notion of a sporty, but at the same time spiritual space, like a cloud of warm vapor, water vapor, energizing, purifying, and spiritual. Vapeur Blanche uh, is not really that new or original in smell, and apparently it bears semblance to a now discontinued Bulgari pour homme. So if you liked that one, then <laughs> wait. Zara does not appear to have any of uh, these fragrances I'm talking about today on its website. Fast fragrance, my friends. So apologies for talking about something you can't get. But you never know, Zara does bring uh, its uh, fragrances back, relaunch them in different bottles and stuff. So you might still get it. Yes, there's always the resale market as well. So this one um, also has a dash of incense in it, which I quite like. It's been infused with like a Zagorst from Comme des Garçons. I can smell it right now. It's really nice. But interesting, I like this smells so different to me than it did the other day. I like it better today. Anyway, this one is cold, crisp, fresh, and a little harsh at the start. Uh, the opening is sharp with some eucalyptus. That minty crispness in, is the star of the show before it fades into like a, a musky, woody skin scent. Uh, like Byredo's Super Cedar, which I have on my shelf over there. I'm going to bring it here? Nah. I think I do enjoy Super Cedar more than this, though. And I think that's probably down to performance. Minty or camphor-like notes in perfumery tend not to float my boat, although in scenting one's room, that's a whole different story. Bring out the peppermint, you know? But I don't know why I am not more into mint and fragrances, because this one, it does escort me directly into a Japanese outdoor onsen, meaning hot spring, in winter, in a tub made of cedar, with some light wind and even snowfall on my face, the tub is is new, so you can get that, you know, fresh wood shaving smell. Maybe there's some shavings on the ground from having just made it. Snow is rare in the part of Japan where I live, but it does happen from time to time, especially in the mountains in January. The scent is uh, uplifting, camphoric, and inoffensive. Great for the office, for sure, but at the end of the day, it's not really, I don't know, it's not really that exciting. It's more like a spa scent. It brings that uh, Vicks Vapor rub to mind. Vapeur. I wonder if that's intentional. In any case, this fragrance is not only the strongest, but the one I uh, personally like the least. So for me, no, I'd pass not buying a full bottle of this. Not that I can anyway. Okay, next in the lineup, we have uh, Popeline Blanche. Fragrance number three, uh, white poplin in English, I guess. And here's the ad copy. The simplicity of a musky cologne, like having fine cotton next to the skin. A white shirt, elegant and timeless. Yeah, that's about right. The top note here is bergamot, yes. At the center we have washed cotton and neroli, and at the base there is musk. This one's a classic. A classic Italian cologne with shower freshness and clean citrusy bergamot and neroli. Mm. It's a clean, thick, 100% cotton, white Hanes t-shirt washed with fancy detergent and left out to dry under the sun with a light breeze. It's warm and slightly starchy when you take it off the line a few hours later and lovingly put it on. Nothing unlikable here, folks. There's a slightly peppercorn citrus spray suspended in a fluffy fog of musks. Something like Aqua de Parma's Colonia, uh, Mugler Cologne, or Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino, that kind of thing. Or maybe even of the German cheapy 4711. Something I'd like my guy to smell like on a spring and summer morning. Even though I like the green edge it takes on with what is likely um, galbanum with the uh, Neroli in the heart of this fragrance, I do think it's a little boring. <laughs> And you do need to spray every hour to get it to work as well as a more uh, expensive cologne. And of course, colognes do tend to perform below average to start with. Yeah, this scent profile has difficulty lasting a while regardless of the price tag. But it's really nice. They're all really, really nice. Okay, last we have Livre Blanc, which is a white book, which has cotton, white woods, and musk 
in its composition. Let me have to change hands now. Ah, okay, so this fragrance projects the least, but smells lovely. It's airy, soft, fresh, papery. I almost get a papyrus note, but not quite. It moves into um, musky cotton territory. Like the others, it's cool and breezy and puffy. The cotton explodes like popcorn out of its bud, popping off the plant and into the air, landing onto um, bleached driftwood to sunbathe at low tide on a random beach. Soft and dry. Soft and dry as that image may be. It's also very creamy. Maybe that driftwood is sandalwood or something. Or it could be the texture of the sand. I don't know. It's nice though. Yeah, Leave Blanc and Blanc Ensoleillé have um, a very similar sort of vibe to them. Really like it. Oh, they're, they're all good, honestly. With Leave Blanc, imagine that feeling of getting into freshly laundered bed sheets after a long bath early in the evening. You're completely dry though. There's no wet hair on the pillow. It feels like you're snuggling into a cloud, not to go to sleep, but just to snuggle while you tuck into a good book. Glasses off if you wear them with your nose near the paper. It's Friday afternoon, late afternoon, and you may get out of bed to do something later, like a night walk in the fresh spring air or something. But you could also stay in bed with the book. Hmm. Yeah, this one is pleasant. I just wish it were stronger. So which is best? I think I like Livre Blanc the best of all even though it's subdued. And despite the marine saltiness, which is usually not my vibe, I do like this uh, Blanc Ensoleillé. So I placed the second, even though I think probably people would, uh, other people, the mainstream would uh, probably rate this one as the top, this um, Popeline Blanche. This is really classic. But it's too masculine, I think. Well, classic masculine for my personal tastes. And Vapeur Blanche sadly dug its grave for me with the eucalyptus. Good effort though. I mean, it does smell good. So what about you guys? Have you tried any of these? And yes, hats off to perfumer Olivia Giacobetti for working so well within what is undoubtedly a restrictive Zara budget, ingredient-wise. I'm no perfumer, but I can only imagine that creating four distinct but cohesively light, bright, and yes, white, cottony fragrances for Zara was unlikely an easy feat. And I hope things like this occur more in the future because uh, perfume is an expensive hobby. Uh, it's an expensive luxury, I think, even the cheap stuff. And uh, we want more of it, you know? So there you go. For beautifully uh, light and airy fragrances, white, bright, and lovely Olivia Jacobetti fragrances from Zara, I hope that you can find them. We'll see you in the next video, guys. Scent Gourmand, signing out. Smell you later. What? <laughs>